Nelson Mandela once said, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. There's a lot of fear in this world, and we all encounter fear every day. Mixed with our fears are our hopes. Mixed with our hopes, there is courage. It's the courage that drives us to continue, even though we don't know what tomorrow will bring. When we walk in courage, we have hope. Our hope must be in that which cannot be destroyed, something that cannot be altered, something that remains constant in this ever-changing world. I fear for my health, my friendships, my ministry, my country, my job, my marriage, my faith, my kids, my future. Our hope must be in Him who holds the world together, in Him who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, in Him who promises to never leave us or forsake us, in Him who vows to give us hope and a future, in Him who has great plans for us. My hope is in Christ alone, the author and finisher of my faith, in whom there is no variation or shadow of change. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lay not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him. And He will make your path straight. Good morning, SJCAC. Good afternoon, New Vine family. Welcome to today's worship service. Today, Pastor Douglas will be bringing us the Word of God. So in preparation, let's prepare our hearts for a time of worship. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity to come together and worship together. Thank you, Lord, that you always provide, and thank you, Lord, that you always show your mercy to us. So come meet us again today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stronger than darkness, new every morning. 
Hello, SJCAC and New Vine families. So great to be with you, worshiping together um, from your households on the Sunday. Uh, Sunday. Uh, so I want to thank you for those of you who were able to join us last Wednesday for our joint concert of prayer and congregational meeting. Uh, we heard some really amazing testimonies of what God has been doing in our lives, but we also thank God for his faithfulness and provision and really ending 2020 in the black, even with a surplus in both the general fund and the missions fund. You know, despite being in a year of a pandemic, uh, we see how God is good, how God is faithful, how he is our Jehovah Jireh. So I really want to especially thank you for your continued generosity and for giving to the Lord and just continuing to, to, to give sacrificially. Now, you'll remember that over the last six weeks, our Sunday messages have been following the weekly themes from our Alliance's 40 Days of Prayer. We first started off by recognizing who God is, His holiness, and some of His attributes. And then we looked inward um, to ourselves, how we need to repent, how we need to confess, uh, what we need to perhaps turn away from, knowing that we are uh, serving an uh, almighty, holy God. And then we talked about how um, we really need to be surrendered um, of ourselves um, and to the Lord and also be full of his spirit, how we need to rely on his spirit to fill us on a daily basis. And then we turned outward and we talked about evangelism. We talked about Acts 1-8, receiving power from the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses before going out, waiting for the Holy Spirit's touch and a, a empowerment before we can be his witnesses. We also touched upon marginalized people, uh, the Good Samaritan story. Uh, it wasn't the priest or the Levite who helped the one who was robbed and beaten, but it was really the Samaritan, the one that was marginalized by the Jews. And then the last week we talked about was Alliance Missions and the importance of really praying for the Lord of the harvest to reap the harvest um, for those who have not yet heard around the world. And last week, you'll remember that Pastor Ted spoke from the books of Acts, and he reminded us of the unfinished work of Jesus. You know, we had a bird's eye view into the life of the early church as recorded in the book of Acts, and what happens when ordinary people are empowered by an extraordinary God. Now, many believe that it, it, perhaps it's up to us to finish the work of preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth, but really a reminder that it's really, it's Jesus who is doing it, and we are actually invited to be a part of it. Our responsibility is really to discern the will of God, to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, to tune our ears to the voice of God. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, we need to give our yes to the Lord, to hear his voice, to know our assignment for this season, and to say yes to it. You know, the story of Acts is still being written, and you and I are a part of that story. God is still writing his story in his church today, and Jesus is inviting us to participate in his work, not just in his nature, but in his work around the world. You know, as I was reflecting um, upon the message last Sunday during our table talk breakout discussion on Zoom last af Sunday afternoon, 
I just was um, struck by the fact that, you know, God doesn't need me. He doesn't need any of us. You know, I have my shortcomings. I have my weaknesses. I have my frailties. I'm not perfect. Um, but yet he still chooses to invite you and I to participate in his work. He wants to grow us. He wants to transform us. He wants us to be more like him. And despite our imperfections, despite our shortcomings, he still chooses to engage with us, to involve us in his work. He doesn't mind that we are, a, we are still works in progress. And what an honor and a joy and a privilege that the God of the universe, the maker of heaven and earth, would want to involve you and I in his great work. So my prayer for all of you is that as we continue to move into 2021, that we would be hearing from the Lord together, that we would receive whatever assignment he has given to us in this next season. Now, when we are attentive to his spirit and his voice and hearing from him together, and when he gives us an assignment, I don't know what your first reaction might be, but oftentimes I might feel a bit overwhelmed or unqualified or even fearful. You know, I might say to God, uh, you want me to do what? Uh, God, are you sure you have the right person? Maybe you were talking to the other person over there. Maybe it wasn't me that you were wanting to, to talk to. Or, or a reaction like, I can't do that. Like, you want me to do what? I, I, I can't do that. Now, before I get into today's passage of scripture, I just wanted to share with you one of my greatest fears, um, which is actually setting off the church burglar alarm. Now, believe it or not, I've been working here at the church for almost four years now. And when we when we first start, uh, we basically um, get oriented on how to disarm the church alarm. Um, you know, Carol Lee graciously taught me the steps of how to disarm the alarm. And, and multiple folks have walked me through it because I get forgetful. Even Pastor John, who's been here less than a year, has walked me through how to disarm the church alarm. Um, you know, but there's just an innate fear in me that every time when I pull into the church parking lot and Eugene or no one else is in the office, I just get taken by fear because I was like, I do not want to trigger the office alarm. And so I will wait oftentimes either in my car or if building A where GPA is housed um, is open, I'll just wait quietly until someone disarms the office alarm. Because there have been times where I've tried to disarm the alarm and I press in the digits and the alarm still goes off. And then I call many people in a panic. I've called Eugene many times. I've called Pastor Dave many times. Like, I don't know what to do. What do I press? The alarm's going off. And, and I thought, actually, I had the right code. You know, it's basically your personal code plus some other digits that correspond to the building that you want to turn off the alarm. Now, it wasn't until a couple months ago that I realized that I kept pushing the wrong button for the office building. I thought that the office building was a certain number, but it, in fact, it wasn't. And so that's why the alarm kept going off, because I had the wrong code. I had associated the office with a particular number that was not true. And now that I have the right code, I disarm the office building alarm like a boss. And every time, I'm so proud of myself. I mean, I've done that like four or five times. But I share this funny story with you because I had a fear of triggering the alarm for the office. And if you've heard the office alarm, it's quite loud. And it wakes everyone up. It just will not go off. But I had this fear. And although I thought I had the right code, it was, in fact, the wrong code. Now, I'm sure there have been times where you have been fearful or full of doubt, especially when the Lord has perhaps asked you to do something, especially when you've heard the Lord give you a particular assignment, and you're like, oh, God, I don't know how to do that. Oh, Lord, I'm really fearful. You want me to do what? You know, I want to take us back to um, a part of the Old Testament uh, where Joshua faced exactly the same thing when he was told that he would succeed Moses and lead the people of Israel into the promised land. In fact, earlier on, even before Moses' death, Moses himself told Joshua in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 to 8, he said to Joshua, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them before you. He, it is the Lord who goes 
before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be fearful or be dismayed. And later in that same chapter, God himself tells Joshua the same thing. Um, in verse uh, 23, the Lord commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give them. I will be with you. And if Joshua hadn't gotten the message by that time, even the leaders of the people of Israel exhorted him later in Joshua chapter 1, verse 18, to only be strong and courageous. Now let's turn to the passage for today from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Read along with me. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to you, to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you, then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, this was the same Joshua who was Moses' aide, Moses' right-hand person, who was with Moses all these years. He witnessed the ten plagues in the land of Egypt. He saw how the Lord delivered the people of Israel out of the land of slavery. He walked through the Red Sea when Moses spread his arms with his staff. He drank the water that poured from the rock when Moses struck that rock. He led the battle with the Amalekites, and they won when Moses' hands were raised. Joshua was the one who went with Moses partway up Mount Sinai as Moses received God's law. He was Moses' right-hand man. Every place that Moses went to, literally, Joshua was there. But now, Moses was dead. He was actually denied entry into the Promised Land because of one act of anger brought about by the disobedience of the people of God. That same people that Joshua was now supposed to lead alone. A seemingly overwhelming task. It's like, God, you want me to do what? You want me to lead these stubborn people into the land of Canaan? You know, in this passage, God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous three times from verses 1 through 9. But in these three times, there are three corresponding aspects that are linked to not being afraid, that are linked to being strong and courageous. And perhaps you may think, you know, just as I thought that I had the right digits to disarm the code for the alarm, that perhaps you may think that you might have the right digits or the right things to not be, to be strong and courageous. Perhaps you're missing something. And I want to share with you these three things as we saw um, from the book of Joshua. The first time that God tells Joshua is from verses three to six, where really God is reminding him of the promises that God has kept. Verse three, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness to this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I was with Moses, 
so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. You know, this is the same promise that God gave to Moses. This is the same promise that God gave many years ago to Abraham, that God's people will inherit the land of Canaan, that the land of Canaan will be the Lord's inheritance for the people of Israel. And what is a particular source of encouragement for Joshua is that this is the same promise that Joshua witnessed being fulfilled in his mentor Moses. Just as God promised Moses the land, so he promises Joshua victory in that land. Moses didn't get to go in, but Joshua witnessed God's promise fulfilled in Moses in delivering the people um, of Israel from Egypt and taking them through the wilderness. He saw that throughout those 40 years of God's faithfulness, of God providing the manna, of God providing the quail, of God feeding, of God um, leading by day, uh, a, 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 a pillar by fire by night, a cloud by day, that God was there. God's promises rang true just to Moses, to the people of Israel, that they would continue to ring true to Joshua. He knew from experience that God kept his promises. And because of God's promises over the last 40 years, he knew that the Lord promised that Joshua would lead the people of Israel into this land of Canaan, into the promised land. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you, God tells Joshua. I will not leave you nor forsake you. How has God been true to his promises in your life, brothers and sisters? For Joshua, it was the last 40-some years. Some of you may not be alive for 40 years. You're, you're youth, you're young. Some of you may be older than 40 years. How has the Lord's promises been true to your life in the years that you have been living, in your 40 years, in your 40-plus years? What about in your family's life? How has God's promises been true in your family's life? Perhaps in your parents' life, maybe you've heard your parents tell you or recount to you stories of God's goodness, of God's faithfulness, of maybe when they first came to the States, of maybe when there, there was a need in the family, maybe when your parents were without work, maybe when uh, something happened in your family. But God delivered. God's promises were true. Or perhaps in a best friend's life, maybe you heard of a friend who had a particular struggle, but yet your friend clung on to God and God's promises rang true in his her, li her life. Just as the Lord promised Moses and delivered Moses, just as the Lord promised Joshua, Joshua knew that he could hold on to God's promises from the past and look towards the future for God to fulfill them. Now, the second place where God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous is in verses 7 to 8. Verse 7 says, Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Now really what's interesting is, I never quite saw this before, how God's word is actually associated with being God's telling Joshua to be strong and courageous. Verse 7 begins to say, only be strong and courageous, but then it also says, it says, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. There's something about knowing God's word and obeying God's word. There's a relationship to being strong and courageous. You know, being careful to do all that the law has said, all that Moses has, has, has told Joshua to do. Meditating on God's law, knowing his heart, um, there's a knowledge of God's word and obedience to God's word, not only knowing it in our heads, but knowing it deeply in our hearts. It's linked to being strong and courageous. 
There seems to be a covenantal relationship. When we keep his word, when we follow it, that we'll be able to be strong and courageous. When we treasure his word, when we not let it depart from our mouths, when we know it, when we chew on it, when we eat it, when we digest it, when we live it, when we recount God's promises, what he says, and hold on to his promises of his word, that the Lord somehow is able to help us to be strong and courageous. How is your time with the Lord and with his word? Are you able to carve out time each day to feast on God's word, to devour it, to eat it? Are you hungry for God's word? Are you thirsting for the law of the Lord? Are you looking forward to spending time with him each day? Are you reading his scripture? Are you meditating? Are you memorizing words of the Lord? Are you taking one key concept from your reading in the day to carry you through the rest of the day? You want to be strong and courageous? Keep his word in your heart. You want the Lord to go before you in battle? Keep his word in your heart. Keep his law in your heart. Meditate on it. There is this linkage that I never saw until this, preparing for this message, that there's a linkage between God's word, God's law, and to being strong and courageous. Now the last part in verse 9 is the last time in this particular passage that God charges Joshua to be strong and courageous. Verse 9 says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It begins with, have I not commanded you? God is commanding Joshua. It's not a request. It's not if you want to, or if you feel like it, or if, you, or if it's convenient for you that you can be strong and courageous. No, it's a command from the Lord that the Lord gave to Joshua. He says, be strong and courageous. God was speaking directly to Joshua. It wasn't Moses speaking to him anymore. It wasn't the people speaking to Joshua. It was the Lord speaking directly to Joshua, looking him in the eye and saying, be strong and courageous. Now, it's the Lord himself that is speaking even to you and I today, that even in 2021, that you and I are called to be strong and courageous with whatever assignment, with whatever task, whatever thing that the Lord is pressing on your heart, that God is saying, I'm commanding you, be strong and courageous. It's okay. Be strong and courageous. You know, and what's amazing in this verse is it says, do not be frightened, do not be dismayed. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God promises us his presence. He promises us to go with us wherever he may lead us, wherever we may go, through the highs, through the lows, through the valleys of life. He is Emmanuel. Jesus is with us. God is with us day in and day out. He's right there beside us. Whether you may be sick, whether you may be without a job, maybe you may be stuck at home, maybe you're feeling isolated, maybe you're with kids uh, you know, in your house uh, teaching them on Zoom. Wherever you are, whatever situation that you are in, Jesus is right there with you. The presence of Almighty God is right there with you so that you can be strong and courageous. Do you recognize Jesus' presence? Do you know that he is surrounding you? Do you know that he is with you, wanting to be in your midst? Maybe you need to ask him to open your eyes to see that he is there with you so that you don't have to be frightened, to see that, in fact, you are surrounded by a host of angels protecting you, ministering to you. Now, of course, later on in the book of Joshua, we see that Joshua leads the people of Israel through the Jordan River. We see the walls of Jericho come down, come tumbling down after they march around the city seven times. And we see the people of the Lord conquer the land and, and fight their enemies, and the God is going before them fighting the battles, and the people are able to enter into the promised land and claim the promised land that God has promised to them. And by chapter 10 of the book of Joshua, 
Actually, Joshua had learned for himself. And now he's telling the people of Israel in Joshua 10, 25. And Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid or dismayed. Be strong and courageous. For thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. You see, as we see and read throughout the book of Joshua, that Joshua, who was perhaps fearful, who was perhaps intimidated, who was perhaps overwhelmed by this huge task of leading millions of Israelites into the promised land, fighting um, the battles, even though he may have been fearful, when the Lord told him those three times, be strong and courageous, he was able to. He was able to because he was able to reflect and be reminded of the promises that God had kept for him and Moses. He was reminded of being strong and courageous because of God's word, being able to meditate on the law, being able to really focus in not on his head, but in his heart to know the law of the Lord and to let it guide him every day. And to know that the Lord was the one who was with him fighting the battle, that he, his presence was enough um, even as he went into enemy territory. These three aspects of being strong and courageous, God's promises that have been kept for you in your lifetime, and perhaps people that you know, God's word being hidden in your heart, and God himself, his presence, these three aspects are linked to being able to be strong and courageous. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't know what you are exactly going through. I don't know what God is doing in your life right now. I don't know what God's assignment is for you right now. I don't know what you're fearful of. Um, I shared a silly example of me being afraid of the church alarm. Maybe it's something seemingly silly like that. Or maybe it's really a matter of life and death that you really are fearful. Maybe you're overwhelmed by a particular situation. Maybe you don't have, you're not sure that you have enough courage or strength to make it through. But the Lord today is commanding you and I to be strong and courageous. The Lord today is reminding us of Joshua's example, that here was this man faced with millions of Israelites, people who didn't always listen, people who were stubborn. But the Lord was saying, look at the promises that I have kept in your time, in your forefather's time. The Lord was reminding Joshua of his word, of his um, law, of his precepts to meditate. Let the word of the Lord minister to you today. Let the word of the Lord sink into your being, sink into your soul. That the Lord is saying, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go through whatever high, whatever low that you are facing. We can do this together because the Lord is going there with us. His presence, the most precious thing, is with us. No matter what battle we may be facing, no matter what struggle we may be encountering, no matter what challenge or what test we may be seeing this week, today, or perhaps next month. Brothers and sisters, let's cling on to God's command that we need to be strong and courageous. But he hasn't left us alone to be strong and courageous. He's given us his promise, his words, and best of all, his self. Join with me as we close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your invitation. That God, you invite us to join you in your work. That Lord, you see us, Lord, as the way you see us, Lord. Not as mere mortals, Lord, but but you see us for who you call us out to be, Lord, your sons and your daughters, or people that are victorious because our faith is in you. So God, we ask, Lord, that no matter what we go through, no matter what we face, no matter how you are speaking to us or whatever assignment you are laying before us, that Jesus, thank you for your promise and your command that we are to be strong and courageous. Lord, we can't do it on our own. We are fearful people. We're stubborn people. We're people that cower back. But Lord, we thank you for your promise that you are here with us. We thank you, Lord, that you, your word, Lord, speaks to us, that your law should be hidden in our heart, that as we meditate on it, Lord, that we will have the strength and the courage to fulfill your assignment. God, we thank you for your presence, Lord, with us, Lord, that you go with us, Lord, to fulfill, Lord, your assignment 
So Jesus, we ask that whatever you are calling us to do, that you will clothe us with your strength, that you will clothe us with your courage, that we would know that we are not alone, that you go before us, that you fight our battles, that you will take us, Lord, into the promised land. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence today. God, we ask, Lord, that you would go before us now, for it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's close with this response song, and then after that, I want to invite you to join us for our Zoom fellowship as we just share life together, as we commit to the Lord, and as we bless each other to be strong and courageous in the Lord. Thanks, and God bless you. We need.